There's an absolutely incredible story that I came across some time ago about a 68-year-old woman named Laura Schwartz who was working in her kitchen and her son was outside working underneath a car in his driveway and the jack that he was using to hold up the car slipped away and the car fell and started to crush the son. And when he cried out in agony, this 68-year-old woman ran outside and lifted up the bumper of the car to save her son from being crushed to death. Later, when the authorities and the reporters started talking to Laura Schwartz, they said, how did you do this? How did you lift up such a heavy object? What do you remember about this scenario, about that night? And she said she didn't remember anything. She pretty much had blocked out the event. And according to Brian Tracy, who mentions this story in his book, Goals, he says that he thinks Laura <clears throat> blotted out that memory because it didn't juxtapose well with her life experience until then. I mean, she'd lived a good life, but I mean, if she could lift up a 2,000 pound car when circumstance required it of her to save her son, then what laid dormant within her her whole life that she hadn't tapped into? That thought scared her, and that's why she couldn't live with that memory. And there are many, many stories about mothers and their babies in particular, in which the child was in dire circumstance, and the mother performed these supernatural acts of heroism to save her child. That desperation, that insane connection between mothers and their children, um, caused these people to tap into supernatural, profound sources of energy. Brian Tracy says that you are surrounded by a universal mind that contains all the intelligence, ideas, and knowledge that has ever existed or that will ever exist. Because of this, different people in different parts of the world will often tap into this source of energy and do extraordinary things with it. And the same concept, I believe, is mentioned in chapter 12 of Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. This chapter is called The Brain, a Broadcasting and Receiving Station for Thought. Here's what's written, written within that chapter. Thought is energy traveling at an exceedingly high rate of vibration. Thought which has been modified or stepped up by any of the major emotions vibrates at a much higher rate of, than, much higher rate than ordinary thought. And it is this type of thought which passes from one brain to another through the broadcasting machinery of the human brain. The result of sex transmutation is the increase of the rate of vibration of thoughts to such a pitch that the creative imagination becomes highly receptive to ideas which it picks up from the ether. Op operation of your mental broadcasting station is a comparatively simple procedure. You have but three simple principles to bear in mind and to apply when you wish to use your broadcasting station. The subconscious mind, creative imagination, and auto-suggestion. And that line, this, this entire chapter is something that isn't talked about, that that one line in particular hits so hard uh, because it validates the experience of everyone on, tran on this transmutative path. You know, he says, the result of sex transmutation is the increase of the rate of, of rate of vibration of thoughts to such a pitch that the creative imagination becomes highly receptive to ideas which it picks up from the ether. This is why NoFap, NoFap works. I mean, one, there, there's many, many reasons why it brings benefits, but the most unique and neglected component of what NoFab does is it brings you into a higher vibration of thought. And it isn't the only metric by which you can lift your, you know, vibrate more highly. Um, Napoleon Hill says that um, a desire, a burning desire for fame, money, um, or just artistic expression, a burning desire will naturally lift up your rate of thought. But what is the need for sex expression if not a burning desire? You know, it is... I mean, for ever since the age of 10, but even before then, like even when I was seven, I thought girls were like attractive. Um, from the ages of 10 to 24, it was uh, like a compulsion within me. It was like something that I uh, was deeply motivated by. <laughs> um, 
and still continue to be. But now I, I continue to be in a source of harnessing, of vigor, of productive output, of yes, that desire is within me, but that desire will translate like this, like this connection that we have right now. When I look at this camera now, I just want to fucking eat it. Um, that is my mind being lifted up to a high vibration of thought. That is me wanting to propel the artistry within me outwards. This is why artists are so important as well. Um, you know, growing up, my dad would always say, um, like, he would say, <laughs> you know, acting is all fine and good as a hobby, but it's not an actual valuable thing. Like, there's no value in it. The same for musicians. It's nice to hear music, but it's not, it's not properly valuable. But nothing could be further than the truth. The things that really are valuable are the things that can take you from feeling like the mon the, the mundaneness of daily existence and pull you upwards to something higher up, you know, like you listen to a great song and you're just like, you see the magic in the world again. It's fantastic. I have such an admiration for talented musicians. Um, so I just uh, see two elements by which you can make the brain a broadcasting station. And those elements are goal-oriented motivation. And the second is faith, acceptance, and release in moving towards your goals. Have that goal-oriented motivation. Have those components that make your desires burning. Um, burning and yet in a source of detachment. Like, for example, let's say you're a musician. Cultivate those disciplines, if you were to cultivate those disciplines within you that make those desires like burning um, through any of the mediums that Napoleon Hills talks about that can elevate the mind. And your job is simply to express your artistry, right? Your job is to, listen, if you're a musician, you should only be worried about two things, putting out music on YouTube Put, or putting out music on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, and maybe IGTV now, Instagram TV. Just put out music and don't look at the numbers. Don't look at views. Just focus on making your videos frequent and improve, improving. You know, like, uh, I, I don't know how good my videos are, to be honest, but I, this is almost like, it's artistic expression at this point. Um, because there's so much within me that I feel like I want to push out and it's, um, it's, it's helping me train my speech. Like I feel like my performance just in, uh, I feel like my acting is becoming better just as a result of this medium, this connection that we're sharing through this. So <laughs> thank you for that. But, um, yeah, when the mind is lifted up to that higher vibration of the th thought, higher vibration of thought, that broadcasting station, you get these ideas, you get these intuitions, and you get movement that you can just mm, push forward. It's really exciting when that happens. I want to close by just making a reference to one of my favorite movies and uh, something that really I feel ties into this. Um, that movie is Fight Club, and it's the scene in which Tyler Durden pulls out a man who's working in a convenience store, this Asian guy named Raymond. He puts him down on his knees and he puts a gun to his head and he says, Raymond, what did you want to be? You took biology classes in community, community college. People don't just do that. What did you want to be? And Raymond says, I wanted to be a veterinarian and stuff. And Tyler Durden says, okay, a veterinarian and stuff. I have your driver's license, driver's license now. If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian, if you're not taking the steps necessary to start the process of becoming a vet in six weeks, I will find you and I will kill you. And Raymond takes off, takes off running. And when Edward Norton's character, the narrator, turns to Tyler Durden and says, what the fuck, man, Why'd you, why would you do that? He responds by saying, tomorrow will be the most glorious day of Raymond's life, Raymond K. Essel's life. His coffee, his breakfast, his orange juice will taste far better than you and you or I have ever eaten or drank. And that's because Raymond, 
at that moment was done an enormous favor. He was almost crunched. He was forced to be lifted up to a high vibration of thought because his life was on the line, because that woman's son's life was on the line, um, because there is a burning desire for sex expression, because there is a burning desire for money, power, fame, wealth, because someone has been completely compelled by music, because uh, there is understanding through mutual suffering, just because of the bond of sheer friendship, maybe the friendship that some of you and I are beginning to develop, because there is desire elevation that allows the thoughts to be lifted up to that higher vibration. You get ideas, you get insights, you get things to act upon. And when you come from that source of deep commitment, um, this is one of the reasons why NoFap works. And this is one of the reasons why um, success is definitely coming for all of us on this journey. Those of us who are willing to step up our rate of thoughts by having that goal-oriented motivation, by having faith, acceptance, and release, detachment. Guys, Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for bearing with me through this video, and I will see you guys this weekend. Cheers, guys. I was a jug, gume, yare, tare, jessana, go, jug, gume, yare, tare, jessana, go, Nabu has an aromatic, Nabu Hushubusu, honey, Nabu Rangali.